Welcome to College Admissions Toolbox, giving you the edge you need to get into the colleges of your dreams with your host, Steve Schwartz. That's me. Today, we're talking with Lydia Fayal. Welcome to College Admissions Toolbox, Lydia. I'm so excited to have you on the program. How are you doing today? Hi, great. How are you doing? All right, now you've got a, I'm good, thanks. Now you've got an impressive background. You know, you, Lydia, you went to Johns Hopkins undergrad, you went to grad school at UPenn, and now you, you've done some college consulting, and now you're the co-founder of a website where current college students are sharing application materials with new applicants. Is that right? Exactly. I mean, we're really trying to uh, address the college admissions process and then eventually grow with our users into grad school and career readiness. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. Take them full circle, huh? So tell us a little bit about your journey. Tell us a little bit about your background and what you do. Sure. So it's a pretty untraditional path for a startup founder. Um, I went to Johns Hopkins uh, University. I actually started early. I graduated high school when I was 16. And I remember it was just an incredibly frustrating process um, because I was so young and I really had no idea what I was going to do. And then I started when I was in college, uh, students part-time doing college consulting and test prep and kept doing this on and off for 10 years. Um, when I was in grad school at UPenn and planning on doing a JD MBA, so law school and business school. Um, but I ended up only finishing the law school part and using the money I saved by not doing an MBA to help bootstrap my startup, um, which I co-founded with another classmate of mine. And yeah, it's been going great. We've been doing this for two years now. That's awesome. Now, how did you get into college consulting in the first place? Um, it was just sort of a, a good part-time job in college. It paid pretty well to do test prep, SAT prep. And I was also a creative writing major um, in undergrad. So what happened was when I was doing test prep, people would ask me to edit their application essays. Um, and then just through word of mouth, I kept getting more clients. So continued to do that on the side. Okay, very cool. Was there some sort of pivotal moment, you know, like you got, you know, take us even back further into the test prep. I mean, lots of people, you know, study for standardized tests, take them, you know, then just move on and kind of want to get it over with. But I, I gather you had a bit of a different experience. So when I was stu- when I was actually prepping for the SATs uh, as a teenager myself, I never I never hired a test prep tutor or took any classes. I just sort of self taught um, by taking the test a lot um, and taking it over and over again. And so um, I figured out a lot of my own sort of tricks to prepping for the test. I really just enjoyed sort of sharing with students who who often were my age or one year younger all these tricks that I figured out and, and yeah, just, uh, just really liked helping with them working on one-on-one. So now you've gone ahead and, and founded a new company. What was the pivotal moment for you that led you to say, you know what, I'm doing test prep on the side a bit. I've been doing college consulting now. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and try to do something really big with this. Well, as a college consultant, the number one question you're asked by clients is, hey, do you know anyone who got into X university and how do I compare to that current student? Um, and I really just wanted to provide a way for students to actually be able to talk to current college students in a safe environment and then also be able to see examples of their application essays. Um, I think it's kind of crazy that in the past 10 years since I was applying to college that not that much has really changed in terms of availability, in terms of the resources. Um, you know, there's still College Confidential. You have those forums where it's anonymous. You can't really trust people. And then you have incredibly expensive college consultants like myself, you know, where we're charging money that not many people can afford. So I wanted to, yeah, the pivotal moment was like, okay, let's, let's give them access to college students and make it affordable. That's really something. So you kind of want to connect the two, connect the two groups there. Exactly. I mean, I think there's just been so much going on the past 10 year with social networking. And you see sort of like how LinkedIn, when you're applying to jobs, you often like look to see, oh, who do you know who's connected to this person you're interviewing with? And it just seemed to make sense. Like, why don't you you know, do that for applying to college and grad school as well? Sure, sure. There's, I'm sure there's definitely demand for that. How do you feel about those those websites like College Confidential that are forums, they're free, but maybe the quality 
of the advice and, you know, the legitimacy of what people are posting on there is maybe a bit lacking, but then like you guys are also internet based. So what do you guys do differently? Yeah. So we verify all of our college students. They have to upload their um, school IDs to the back end. And we also have um, monitors who are checking all of the application files, the essays, um, to make sure that it's reasonable that those were the essays submitted. And we have people uh, just screening the conversations between mentors and students. So in that sense, it's, it's you know, we're making sure like everyone is, is who they say they are and it's a positive environment. I always think with College Confidential, you know, it can be really destructive. There are forums, you'll read forums where it's like the, what are my chances of getting into this school? And you have students claiming that they're in college and saying, like, you have zero chance of being accepted to this university. Um, I think a lot of times the people who are writing those negative comments are actually just other high school students who are trying to knock down their competition, and they're succeeding. I mean, these it, it hurts. So in that sense, we're trying to, yeah, create a, a, a positive, verified, trustworthy environment. And it's a good alternative to College Confidential. Sure, sure. What kind of what kind of research did you do in your own college admissions search? Like, what what sort of resources did you use back at that time? Yeah, so I um, started college in two thousand three. So this is this is way back when. This is sort of the go to the guidance um, counselor's office and pick up a big book and you know flip through Fisk's you know description of colleges. Um, honestly. Uh, I didn't do enough research when I was applying to schools. I didn't visit colleges except for my parents' alma maters and uh, Stanford um, until after I got into school. So I knew I wanted to go, what I wanted to do. Um, and in that sense, like I'm, I'm lucky I, it all worked out. And I'm sort of, I think, took me longer to figure out what I wanted to do for a career because I, um, in undergrad, wasn't so sure about where I wanted to go or what I wanted to do. I think preparation is key. I think visiting more schools and reading more resources. If I could go back and do it over, I, you know, probably should have done that. Sure. Sure. No, absolutely. No, definitely research is key, but it it seems like it still turned out okay in the end, right? Yeah. I mean, I think like with everything, it's kind of, you know, if, if you always focus on sort of making most of your situation and, and finding good mentors, you, you can eventually get on that path. Right after college, I actually worked at a big, um, I worked in the entertainment industry um, at a big talent agency optioning book rights to be developed into films. So in that sense, um, when I say my career is sort of, you know, it's not the traditional path of a startup founder. I mean, I, when I was an undergrad, thought that I was going to go into the entertainment industry on the business side and instead, um, you know, went back thinking, okay, I want to get a business and law degree and ended up, you know, ended up still just obsessing over how frustrating the college admissions processes and grad school process and ended up deciding that I was going to solve that instead. Sure, sure. No, it can absolutely, absolutely be quite frustrating. There's a lot that could be changed about. It. And so I'm glad to see that you're, that you're doing a lot of good work in this space. I want to shift gears a little bit and, uh, shift towards like a teachable moment, you know, take us to the moment in time of like the worst college admissions moment that you've seen or experienced yourself. Tell us a story. Sure. So I think, um, I think the story that I sort of see, have seen it with a lot of students who I've worked with and I've seen it with myself, um, when applying to college is that, um, including myself, just create these laundry lists of everything that they've accomplished. And when they're applying to college, you know, they submit basically these, these unending resumes of every single thing that they participated in, every test they took, and, and their essays are kind of this, like, you know, way of boosting themselves and saying that, oh, I've accomplished so much. The problem with that that I've seen is that colleges really just want to be able to sort of like label you as an applicant and say this person is this person and they're going to be adding this to the school. Um, And so I think for me, like that's what really hurt me when, you know, I got rejected from my first choice college um, because I did the laundry list. And with students who I worked with, the more I sort of had them hone, you know, who they are and what their exact story is, the more success they had when applying to, to schools. 
Yeah, no, definitely the laundry list you definitely want to avoid. Could you give us an example of maybe you know someone you've encountered who's done things the right way when it when it comes to that? I'm sure I'm sure you've looked at a lot of applications as you've been as as you've been creating creating in Etsy. Yeah, so I think the right way um, is uh, someone I worked with super passionate about um, studying archaeology. Um, and so when she was sort of looking at schools, we looked at which schools had the best research programs during the summer um, that she could potentially intern, you know, and, and participate in. And then before applying, had her reach out to the professors in these very small departments. So that's really key is if you're super passionate about, a, you know, a, a certain class or, or study um, to reach out to professors before you apply and say, look, I'm visiting, you know, this is my experience. I would love, you know, to stop by your department and speak to a secretary or anyone if you have time um, and make that personal connection. And then when she was actually applying to the school, ended up going to UPenn um, for undergrad and uh, was able to have a great sort of why she wanted to go to that school story actually ended up having a professor write a kind word for her because she ended up doing the summer program before going. Everything that she had done in high school focused really on the summer programs she had done and her passion for like learning Latin and learning Greek because of her desire to do archaeology. Um, and also she was applying to a small program in the school that they're trying to grow. So that's another thing is if you are looking at reach schools um, and you see that this university has just, you know, is expanding this department and they're, they're talking about expanding it. They're writing on their website about how they're putting money into this program. They're looking for more students in that program to apply to that. So I think that that's something when we're really trying to find the reach schools for students, figuring out sort of like, where is the university going to possibly like be micro targeting those types of students? Well, absolutely, Lydia. That's that's such great advice there. You know, look for a growing department, reach out to professors there, Talk, you know, meet them beforehand, talk a little bit about your experiences, and then they can really be an advocate for you when it comes time to apply. The joke with like a few of our, my engineering students was always like, if you really want to go to Carnegie Mellon, like, you know, instead of studying for this test, like pick up the bagpipe, like Carnegie Mellon, like always <laughs> has to like graduate they're like they had the one bagpiping major in the United States. And so it's always like, if you really want to go there, just take a bagpiping and you're automatically in if you say you'll you'll dual major in bagpiping. No, absolutely. It's very clever. You know, a backdoor sort of approach can can often be effective. Uh, it's great. I want to shift yeah. gears now a little bit and you know, ask you to take us to you know a moment of inspiration that you've seen or experienced, like a light bulb moment you know, the sort of moment that can really set a student on the path to success? Yeah, so I think times when you're sort of trying to figure out what you want to do, what you want to study, it's too easy to fall into like, oh, I'm good at this, you know, and so if I should send, I should go to the schools that have this program just because I'm good at it. And I think instead what you kind of need to think about is, is what would you potentially want for a career long term? Like what does that actually look like if you were to study that? Work your way backwards so you have more of a long-term vision. And also think about, more than anything, what don't you like to do? You know, not just what are you good at, but what don't you like to do? And so as you're thinking about college and which schools to apply to, it's easy to be like, oh, I might like to be in this you know, in a suburban environment versus rural environment. But instead, just think, what don't you want? And eliminate that way. No, sure. That's definitely some great advice in doing some exploration and figuring out what doesn't work for you and then kind of narrow it down from there. Uh, do you have any uh, concrete examples of, you know, applicants you've worked with or applications you've reviewed where, you know, you could talk a little bit about some some real world experiences? Yeah. So I think um, a lot of times what happens with the applicants that I've seen and, and I've read, you know, at this point, hundreds of application essays, especially because we have just hundreds of with thousands of application essays on Admitsy and, and I still try and screen them. Um, what I've seen with the transfer students, so the students who have, you know, switched schools is a lot of times they went to the best school that they got into 
and then realize that they didn't have the program or really what they were interested in studying. And that's why they ended up transferring. I think that, um, you know, like make sure when you're applying that the school, you're not just going by U S news and world report rankings. You're really thinking about what do you want to get out of your education? And, uh, the original question I can to give you some examples of, of the light bulb. I mean, I think that's, yeah, transferring is, is such an incredibly frustrating thing. Uh, I would avoid that at all costs. No, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. After you put in all this effort into applying somewhere once, you certainly don't want to do it again a year or two later. You know, it's, exactly. a lot, it's a lot of the frustrating process to go about it enough one time. I couldn't agree more. It's scary to like have to go into a school and make new friends where, you know, people have already sort of established friendships and you might end up paying a whole extra year tuition. So for students that, you know, I've worked with, I always advise like do as much research as you possibly can up front um, about where you're going and really spend time at the schools before you go. Oh, absolutely. No, I've worked with a lot of students through, through the transferring process and you'd be surprised you know, how few credits will transfer over sometimes when these schools really want to, the, the school you're applying to really wants to get as, as many tuition dollars and dollars per credit as they can. Oh yeah. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely some valuable nuggets there. Thanks for sharing those, Lydia. Uh, I want to shift gears now and move into the lightning round where I'm going to ask you a couple of rapid fire questions. You give me some rapid fire responses. Are you ready? Sure. Awesome. All right. What's your number one piece of advice for the college admissions process? Just think about your story, like how you would pitch yourself in two sentences to an admissions officer and make sure that everything that you're including in your application ties back to that. Absolutely. That elevator pitch is key. Could you share with us one habit that you believe contributes to college admissions success? Yeah, uh, get good sleep before your tests. <laughs> I think that that's like the most forgotten thing. You'll hear everything else, you know, um, about how to get into school, but get good sleep and just that way you're alert before your interviews, before your tests. I mean, you do not want to be going into a college application interview rambling because you didn't sleep for the two nights before. Absolutely. You want to be on fire when you're going into those big days. Can you share with us one online college admissions resource that you absolutely love? Well, besides admitsy.com, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, there's so there are so many good college resources out there. I think admittedly, um, which we get compared to a lot because of the similar names, is really great to uh, take you know, to take a quiz to figure out which schools to apply to. So definitely check out admitted.ly as well. Oh, great. No, thanks for mentioning that. We'll link to all of these in the show notes. Uh, what's one book that you believe no college applicant should be without? Yeah, I, I, they're just, there's so many. Um, honestly, like the, as some, to just completely go off from the college admissions uh, books for a second, a book that I really like that I think will help you in life in general is a book called getting more, um, which is about just getting more out of your conversations with people. And I think that, um, that if you're doing any application interviews and talking to admissions officers and also figuring out how to really sell yourself in your application essays is a, is a great resource. Um, getting more by, uh, by diamond. Oh, great. No, I'll have to look into that one. Definitely the art of conversation and meeting people, Super important, you know, making a great impression with folks you encounter. Super valuable. Thanks for sharing that one. And uh, what are you currently working on or looking forward to? Um, we're rolling out a bunch of new graphs right now, customizable graphs on our data. So that's what I'm super excited about. We just launched one um, that's a bubble chart where you can see where all of our users were accepted and where else they applied. So if you plug in like NYU, for instance, you can see that we have 400 college application files of kids who were accepted and 200 of kids who were rejected and then all the other schools that the kids who were accepted also applied. So I'm just excited to kind of give our users a way to, uh, to, you know, analyze the data that we've been collecting. That sounds like some really valuable information that I'm sure our listeners will love to check out. So we'll have to link to that one too. So thanks so much for joining us, Lydia. This was, this was great. You definitely gave us some powerful knowledge bombs there. Uh, before you go, could you leave us with a quick parting thought? Sure. Um, I, you know, I think that applying to college is one of the scariest things you're ever going to have to do. And it's the first time in your life that you're really going to set yourself up for 
rejection that can be really painful and it can feel like the end of the world when you don't get into your first choice school, don't let it, don't let it bother you. I mean, there's something, any school you go to, you can have an amazing experience. Um, you know, make good decisions about the schools that you're applying to and apply to a wide variety in terms of reach and safeties. And no matter where you end up, it's what you do with it. I know, you know, I know kids who went to uh, UPenn for uh, graduate school and to Harvard for graduate school who came from, you know, schools that I've never heard of. So it really does not matter where you go to college. It's what you do with it in the long run. No, absolutely. And definitely listeners should keep in mind that even if you don't end up at that top school, it still will be okay because it's more about you as an individual than where you end up. Obviously, you want to go to the best school you can considering your interests and what you're able to achieve, but I definitely agree that if it doesn't work out, it still will be okay. So thanks so much for for making that point. Now, finally, Lydia, where can folks find you online? Sure. Um, it's admitsy.com, um, admit, A-D-M-I-T-S-E-E.com. And uh, yeah, you can contact us through the website um, and you can read a little bit more about us on our team page. Um, and uh, I'm one of the people who always responds to to emails um, through the website. So please contact us. And we're also, we always have a rolling internship program if you want to, um, as a high school student or a college student, get involved in that. We have paid interns throughout the year. Oh, wow. I'm sure folks will definitely be contacting you for those. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Lydia. Take care. You too. Thanks so much, Steve. When I first started working on my applications, I felt like I was competing with everyone at my school. There was this sense that top colleges would only take a few kids from each high school, and it made people afraid to help each other. So I went online and looked at message boards and forums to try and get help from others who were also going through the process. But I felt like a lot of them just had this kind of negative vibe. Everyone's accomplishments seemed more impressive than mine, and the people who posted were just kind of full of themselves. To be honest, it ended up making me feel bad about my chances like I didn't have a shot at getting into my reach schools. So over the past few years, I've been working to try and change this. I've built an online forum where people actually help each other instead of putting each other down. And you can get advice from experts who've helped thousands of students get into top colleges. So check it out and feel free to post any questions you have at collegeadmissionstoolbox.com slash forum. Thanks for listening to College Admissions Toolbox. Head over to www.collegeadmissionstoolbox.com to get more free tools and resources that will help you get into the colleges of your dreams.